My F25 boyfriend M28 have been dating for about three years and we currently live together. He has a brother M31 who is getting married very soon. He is his brother's best man and of course was invited to his bachelor party. It is okay since I get along well with his brother and I'm invited to the bride's bachelorette party that will be later this week. Everything was okay, but like at 2 a.m. my phone started ringing and got a lot of messages. When I want to see what was it, I saw that one of the guys at the party took my boyfriend's phone and was sending me images and videos in real time of him having intimacy with a naked woman. He looked half dead and fainted while the woman was moving so aggressively on top of him and the other guys were cheering, throwing alcohol and doing other crazy things. The guy who took the phone was screaming, your boy is having so much fun right now. I tried to see what was going on and one of the first videos showed him receiving a lap dance from this girl while visibly drunk but very much awake. He kept sending me stuffs but I was so upset that blocked my boyfriend's number so they couldn't send me anything else. I tried calling his brother but didn't pick it up. Then I tried calling his dad, who wasn't at the party but I thought could help, but didn't pick up either. I just cried for the rest of the night until I just fell asleep again. Then his friends brought him back home around 11 a.m. They had to help him walk and after I opened the door they left him at the sofa and left. He just slept in the sofa and said nothing and woke up at 4 p.m. with a hangover and not remembering when he came back home. His phone was missing, and he had no idea who could have it. We had barely spoken, and I haven't mentioned the infidelity yet because I'm expecting him to be the first one to bring that up. But it's been two days, and there is just silence, and he looked kinda scared. Maybe he knows his friends told me, and show me everything and knows our relationship is over? Ick if it is really over, but this is his fault and I don't want to be the first one to say the obvious. I need some help on how to much forward. I don't know if I should tell the bride what happened at the party. TLDR, my boyfriend went on a bachelor party and in the middle of the night someone sent videos and images to my phone from his of him having sex with a woman while he was drunk. It's been two days and we still haven't spoken about his infidelity and I think my relationship might be over. Relevant comment. Does that honestly sound consensual to you? What do you mean? He was having sex with her dick up and deep in her. He is very vocal about what he wants or not to do. I think he did it because he wanted it and then got too drunk, otherwise would have stopped it earlier. Not to digress, but I think a background of how well you know his circle would be very useful. By the time you're making the big step, you should know about his crazy friends, or lack thereof, and the dynamics therein, and he should know yours too. I'm not blaming you nor giving him, his brother plus his friends a pass for what happened, but it seems you are oblivious to how wild these guys can be when they get together. The guy who took the phone was screaming your boy is having so much fun right now. I think it's safe to conclude that the friends, or at least the person sending the videos, was told or assumed that you permitted any shenanigans that may happen at that bachelor party. We can argue about how insane it was for them to believe whoever told them that, but we should acknowledge that unless sending you the videos was to jeopardize your relationship, the person sending the videos didn't see any harm. In sending the videos. Again, that's a crazy thing for anyone to think. So it's back to how well do you know his circle? Sounds like a bunch of airheads at least. Even if you permitted the lewdness for one night, why send you footage of that? All that aside, I strongly suggest you first speak to his friend that sent you the messages before you confront your BF. In your discussion with this person, inquire about who it was that okayed the naked woman, the intercourse, and what was said about your approval, or if they or your BF cared. I caution you to not speak in the context of anger but inquiry. You have every right to flip out, but that'll only have his friend hold back important information as to how slash why all this happened. Otherwise, the company we keep is a reflection slash manifestation of who we are, unless under deception, nobody is around people that they shouldn't be with. This situation will reveal to you about who you're about to spend the rest of your life with, if you smartly inquire. I know him and his brother are still close with his college friends, and they were wild and funny in college, but then most of them settled down. Update 1. Hello Reddit. I, F25, had a boyfriend, M28, until some days ago. I've told this story like too many times IRL already, and I'm tired so I'm gonna be quick. He went to his brother's bachelor party. I thought it was going to be okay since his family and friends were there. Until around 2am where I started getting messages on my phone. Someone took his phone and was sending me videos and photos of him having sex with a woman. The guy who took his phone even said, look how much fun your boy is having. Then they brought him home the next morning, and he slept till the afternoon not remembering anything. After two days of silence I confronted him about what happened. He said that didn't really know. I showed him the videos I was sent from his phone by someone else. He looked horrified and said was almost basically unconscious. The problem is that he is clearly hard and I have a hard time believing it could be so hard while drunk. So I told him he wasn't telling me the full story. He said that they were drinking, 
They brought that girl so make the party funnier for the guys, and next thing he remembers wakes up at him in the sofa. When he gets drunk, his body loses strength and then falls asleep, so he being hard is what makes me not believe him. We had an argument, he was crying and saying wouldn't cheat on me on purpose, but his story had so many holes I couldn't take it. He begged me to believe him but I had way too many videos of him having sex with a random woman to even look at him in the eye. So I left and went to my sister's place. I then phoned the bride to tell her what happened at the party. Next thing is so many of the guys at the party had a lot of explaining to do, and the wedding ended up with half of the initial guest list attending. My ex-brother has berated me for ruining his wedding and I've been told that my ex is way too depressed because of what happened, and he blames himself. I've been told that I've destroyed him, but I can't stop thinking about the videos and imagining the other woman jumping on him while the guys cheered. So I wonder if I'm the asshole in this whole situation. I'm just feeling terrible for everything. Edit. About what everyone is saying happened to my ex. I addressed that on a post on my profile. I think is too hard to talk it right here. Also the wedding already happened. Ended up with way less guests that they expected because many people said they wouldn't go after hearing what happened at the party. The bride wanted to postpone it, but they couldn't get refunds on anything, so they did the wedding more or less as they planned. The bride's bachelorette party also happened. I was invited but didn't go. Of course I didn't go to the wedding. I'm in good terms with the bride, but her new husband says I ruined everything. Relevant comments. Why would a third party record that? Why would a third party send that to his partner? How would they know which number was his partner's? How did they access his phone? There are things that I still don't know, but he was a brother's friend that I didn't know, and he was helped by others. My ex never had a password or PIN or any lock on his phone. My number was always pinned on top. I still don't know who the idea was. About my ex, struggle cuddled, post on profile. Okay, IDK where I could post this, so I'm doing it on my profile. So many people on my previous posts has repeated over and over that my ex was struggle cuddled, but I still don't understand it. Yes, he looked like was unconscious at the party and in the videos, but seriously, is the being hard part that keeps me wondering. Some has said Viagra might do it, but combined with alcohol? When alcohol and dilutes everything in the blood and makes every med nor be effective, and I've been sexually assaulted in the past, I know what it feels like and how it messes with your head, but like, I was fully overpowered and the only thing I was able to do was screaming and that didn't help. I know technically men could be struggle cuddled if they are penetrated, but I have a hard time understanding how the one who penetrates is being struggled, because that is the most important part about struggle cuddle. Also my ex haven't mentioned being struggled once, he said that wouldn't cheat on purpose, so he admitted that it was cheating even if he doesn't remember it. Like, I'm no expert, but I think I know more about getting assaulted than most people commenting. I don't wish it on anyone, but I just still don't see how is that essay. I came to Reddit to clear my mind, vent, and ask if I did the right thing because the end of my relationship has been so hard on me, and I still need to deal with picking some of my stuffs at the place we share together. I've been crying a lot and feel sorry for him. I'm sorry if I offended someone. Update 2 I was going to leave this alone. But guess what? I can't. So here I am, back with another update. Since my last post, I've been crashing at my sister's place and trying to process everything. I thought after talking to my ex, dealing with the videos, and blowing up his brother's wedding, the worst was behind me. But of course, life had other plans. So remember how I said my ex was all depressed and blaming himself? Well, he's been blowing up my phone for the last few days, alternating between begging for forgiveness and saying he didn't remember anything from the night. He's even hinted that maybe his friends set him up, but that didn't exactly sit well with me. I didn't reply to any of his texts because, honestly, I was too emotionally drained to deal with it. Until, last night, I was scrolling through Instagram, yes, I know I shouldn't have been, when I noticed a new follow request from a name I didn't recognize. Weird. But I accepted because, hey, I'm nosy like that. And the first message I got from this account? I need to tell you something about that night. Now, my heart was in my throat. Turns out it was one of the guys from the bachelor party. He was clearly drunk in his DMs and spilling everything like it was some kind of confession. He said, that girl? She was a stripper hired by your ex's brother. He paid her extra to make sure she went all the way with him. Everyone was in on it. Except your ex. He didn't want anything to do with it. What? I didn't know whether to laugh or throw my phone out the window. Apparently, the whole point was to prank my ex, get him so wasted that he wouldn't even know what was happening, and then wait for it send me the videos as a joke. Yeah, a joke. Because apparently, screwing up someone's relationship and mental health is peak comedy to these idiots. The guy in the DMs kept going, saying that after they got my ex blackout drunk, they slipped him something he wasn't sure what, but it wasn't just alcohol. That's why he was so out of it in the videos, and according to him, that's also why my ex doesn't remember anything. 
They wanted to humiliate him in front of me as some sort of twisted bachelor party tradition. I was furious. It wasn't just the betrayal. It was the fact that these people I thought were his friends' his brother, no less were actively trying to destroy our relationship, and my ex had no clue. I mean, I was starting to feel bad for him at this point. But the story doesn't end there. Today, out of nowhere, his brother calls me. The audacity, right? I wasn't going to answer, but curiosity got the better of me. He's on the other end, stammering and trying to explain how he didn't mean for things to go this far, and how everything was just a joke. I hung up mid-sentence. I don't need his half-baked apologies. Then my ex calls. Again. And this time, I pick up. I tell him everything the guy from the party said. The stripper. The joke. The drugs. Everything. Silence. I could hear him breathing, but nothing else. Finally, he says, I didn't know. And I believe him. But here's the kicker. He starts crying. Like, full-on sobbing. And not because I was confronting him again, but because he felt violated. He said that he knew something wasn't right, that he'd been having weird flashes of the night, and that he'd been too ashamed to tell me because he thought I'd never believe him. But now, everything was clicking into place for him. And Reddit, here's where things get really wild. As we're having this conversation, there's a knock on my sister's door. It's my ex. He drove to my sister's place without even telling me. Now he's standing there, disheveled, looking like he hasn't slept in days, and asking me to forgive him. Not just for the bachelor party, but for everything for not being honest sooner, for not being upfront about how bad his brother and friends could be, and for not trusting me enough to tell me what he suspected about that night. I didn't know what to do. I'm standing there, holding my phone in one hand, looking at him in the flesh with all this information swirling around in my head. Part of me felt sorry for him. The other part? Still livid. I mean, how can I just forget about the videos, the betrayal, the wedding fiasco, all of it? But before I could even say anything, he just collapses in front of me, sobbing, saying he doesn't know how to live with himself. That's when my sister, bless her nosy self, steps in and pulls me back inside, slamming the door in his face. I haven't opened it since. And now? I'm stuck. I'm sitting here, writing this update, staring at the door, wondering if I should even give him another chance. The part of me that believed in him from the start wants to. But the damage is done. And let's be real. How can I ever trust him or anyone in his circle again after this? Update 3. So, after the whole fiasco of my ex showing up at my sister's door, sobbing like his world was ending, I was wrecked. Like, truly torn. The guy I had loved for three years was standing outside, broken. But in my head, all I could see were those videos. That woman. His friends laughing and egging him on. It was like I was living in a horror movie, stuck on replay. But I didn't open the door. I couldn't. That night, I hardly slept. My mind was racing, and I kept replaying his words, the DMs from his friend, the betrayal from his brother. Part of me wanted to let him in, hear him out one last time. But I knew that doing that meant opening a door I wasn't sure I could close again. The next morning, I woke up to more messages from my ex. This time, he wasn't begging for forgiveness. No, he was furious. Apparently, after I left him on my sister's doorstep, he drove straight to his brother's house and confronted him. And let's just say things got ugly. I'm talking full-blown screaming match, fists flying, broken furniture, you name it. My ex told me he punched his brother so hard he split his lip, and the two of them basically trashed half the house. And guess what? The bride his brother's new wife was there for all of it. She finally got to hear the whole truth, not just the watered-down version she'd been fed. Turns out, she had no idea the extent of the chaos that went down at the bachelor party. She thought it was just a wild night of drinking, nothing more. My ex's brother had been lying to her the entire time, covering up the fact that they drugged my ex and set up the whole night to ruin him. So now, the bride is furious. I mean, she literally threw her wedding ring at him and kicked him out of the house. Last I heard, she's talking to a divorce lawyer barely a week into their marriage. Talk about karma. But here's where things get even more twisted. After his blowout with his brother, my ex goes full detective mode. He starts digging into the friend group, trying to piece together who exactly was responsible for what. And that's when he finds out something huge. Remember the guy who had been demaying me, confessing everything? Turns out, he wasn't just some random drunk idiot. He was the mastermind. He was the one who convinced everyone else to spike my ex's drink. He's the one who paid the stripper extra, and he's the one who sent the videos to me. All of it was planned specifically to ruin my ex's relationship with me. Why? Well, here's the kicker. This guy, let's call him Trevor, has been nursing a secret crush on me for years. Years. I had no clue. 
He was one of those guys who was always lurking on the fringes, quiet, never really standing out. Apparently, he thought if he could blow up my relationship, he'd swoop in and comfort me, and somehow I'd magically fall in love with him. Yeah, the logic of a psychopath. So now my ex is beside himself. He's texting me, calling me, saying he's found the real villain behind all of this and that we can finally put it all behind us. It wasn't me, he keeps saying. It was Trevor. I never wanted any of this to happen. I love you. And I just, I snapped. I called him. The second he picked up, I laid it all out for him. I told him that while Trevor was clearly a snake, the fact remains. He allowed these people into his life, his brother, his friends, all of them. He chose to surround himself with people who didn't respect him or our relationship. Even if he was drugged, even if he was manipulated, I couldn't ignore the fact that our trust was shattered. I told him that this wasn't just about what happened that night. This was about everything that led up to it, the lack of communication, the lies, the secrets, the toxic friends. I couldn't live my life constantly looking over my shoulder, wondering when the next betrayal would happen. He begged. He cried. He said he'd cut everyone off, that he'd move cities, that he'd do anything to make things right. But in that moment, I realized something. No matter how much I loved him, no matter how much I wanted to believe he could change, I had changed. I wasn't the same person I was when we started dating. The trust was gone. And without trust, what's left? So, I told him it was over. For good. He was silent for a long time. And then he whispered, I never meant to lose you. And I think, in some twisted way, that was the truth. But it didn't matter. It was too late. I hung up the phone. And for the first time in days, I felt free. Like a weight had been lifted off my chest. I wasn't angry anymore. I wasn't sad. I was just done. As for Trevor, I blocked him on everything. I have no idea what kind of delusional fantasy he thought he was living in, but I want no part of it. My ex mentioned he's planning to press charges against him for spiking his drink and sending those videos, and honestly, I hope he does. That guy deserves to rot in whatever hole he crawled out of. The bride? She's already filed for divorce, and I heard through the grapevine that she's moving back in with her parents. Honestly, I don't blame her. If I were in her shoes, I'd be running too. So that's it, Reddit. It's all over. The relationship, the drama, the lies, it's all behind me now. It's not the ending I expected, and it's not the happy ever after I hoped for. But in a way, it's the ending I needed.